So welcome to the class, uh, Ari Academy CACSCME. I am your faculty Uday Kumar. So in yesterday class, we just uh, had like overview of like auditing, like introduction part. So in this class today, we uh, will be like continuing the introduction part by starting with like concept and different definitions of auditing. Okay. So Haridarshni, you can read this out. Yes, sir. The concept of audit has undergone continuous change over the period. Hence, it is required that the meaning of the term audit is analyzed both in traditional, uh, narrow, and broad sense of them. Uh, narrow perspective, the term audit has been derived from the Latin word order, which means to hear. In early days, the person appointed to check the accounts used to hear the explanations required from responsible officers, and that's why he, he was called as an auditor. Some of the definitions given by a few well-known experts in the field indeed highlight the above on a narrow perspective. Okay. According okay. to okay. okay, okay. So before that, uh, like uh, let's just uh, go through with this like narrow perspective. So the concept of audit has undergone continuous change over the period. Hence, it is required that the meaning of the term audit is analyzed both in the traditional, which means in a narrow and uh, modern, which means broad sense of them. So before like uh, like changing over the period, so before early in early stage, the concept of auditing was like narrow, just to uh, like uh, give an opinion on uh, financial information. Okay, the term narrow indicates that finance just in financial information, financial information, which means the statements, financial statements, what are the numbers represented in it? What are the like, uh, like ledgers or the books of accounts? What are the just records of books which were maintained by the organization? They just go, uh, used to go through with the things and they just used to give an opinion on the financial statements. That's which is purely related to financial information. And when it comes to like changing over the period, it uh, became like a broad sense of them. So it's not just about represent like uh you know, like go like analyzing the financial statements and um verifying it and not just going through just go through with the financial information which means the numbers which were represented in the yeah, like balance sheet which were noted down all those things this they go through with the financial information the, which means that is called narrow traditional technique okay that was a narrow perspective when it comes to like broad sense of the modern. In case of modern broad sense of them, it's not just about the financial information. It also like non-financial informations, right? So what do you think of like non-financial non information? The non-financial non information, it considers like the deed or like the agreements. What are the like uh, terms and conditions, right? Do you think is that uh, financial information, the agreements or the terms and conditions, they are not the financial information, right? They are not just represented in the like numerical terms. In the balance sheet or the financial statements, right? So yes, before sir. in the earlier periods, like before that, this uh like uh, if, if if you like for an example, before like 50 or 60 uh, earlier stage, 50 or 60 years back, like they were just go through with the financial information. So when it comes to broad sense of them, like in the modern perspective, they consider both financial and non-financial information. Okay. So that was the difference. Narrow perspective on modern broad sense of them. You can easily remember by considering that the word term traditional or the narrow perspective. You just keep in your mind that it just go through with the financial information. So when it comes to modern broad sense of the term modern, you should consider the two points like financial information as well as non-financial information. I hope you understand what do you, what does the term mean like non-financial information. I hope yes, you sir. understand right. Yes, sir. So, okay, so the narrow perspective, the term audit has been derived from the Latin word adair. It's a Latin word. So, it's a, the term is like adair, which means to hear. So, in early days, the person appointed to check the accounts used to hear the explanation required from the responsible officers. And that's why he was called as an auditor. Okay. So, few of the there are some definitions by a few well-known experts in the field indeed highlight the about narrow perspective. According to Taylor and Perry, audit is defined as an investigation of some statements of figures involving examination of certain evidence so as to uh, enable an auditor to make a report on the statement. So it's purely given like, and an audit is defined as an investigation of some statement of figures involving examination. As I told you, it was like a, examining the books of accounts 
so in the narrow perspective you will be just go go you will be just going through with the figures numbers quantities okay just purely about the financial information that was the definition given by the taylor and perry okay yes so sir then, and then uh, in the words of frm d paula an audit denotes the examination of balance sheet and profit and loss account prepared by others together with the books of accounts and vouchers relating thereto in a such a manner that the auditor may be able to satisfy himself and honestly report that in his opinion such balance sheet is properly drawn up so as to exhibit a true and correct view of the state of affairs of the particular concern according to the information and explanation given to him as shown by the books <laughs> so it just again it repeated again it's repeated like there were less shown as the investigation of some statements here it is detailed in elaborated like examination of balance sheet and profit and loss account prepared by others together which means it was it is prepared by whom it is prepared by the members or the management right with the books of accounts and vouchers relating there to you how, how do you verify it's called like vouching so in our upcoming classes we will discuss even the term vouching vouching and verifications so what does it mean vouching so the statements of the books of accounts it will be verified with the help of receipts or the bills what are the vouchers i hope you know the term called vouchers right if you buy some product you will uh, you will receive a bill or like invoice right yes sir so you will compare all the transactions with the help of receipts that's called vouchers receipts are the invoice or the bill right debit note credit we have plenty of things right and yes. the vouchers so you will be like comparing and, uh, and you will verify through with the help of vouchers right and first in as per frm d paula first of all he need to satisfy himself and honestly he should give a opinion he should give a audit report that's called audit report he should report on he should make a report on it. right such balance sheet is properly drawn up so as to exhibit a true and correct view of the state of affairs of the particular concern according to the information so did it just again and again it will be repeated until the completion of the introduction part okay you won't find any difficulty in between these definitions you need not like differentiate uh, taylor and perry definition and frmd paula definition both are same they are just uh, they have represented under the same thing called narrow perspective right so there are different kinds of like professor they are like different persons they are just uh, representing the term audit in their own in their from their point of view okay so there is one more can you uh, read this out like according to professor montgomery yes sir according to professor montgomery auditing is the is a systematic examination of the books and records of business or other organizations in order to ascertain or verify and to report upon the facts regarding its financial operations and the result thereof okay again it's the same thing auditing is a systematic examination of the books and records of business or other organization in order to ascertain or verify and to report upon the facts regarding its financial operations so i told you like right it's purely about the financial information not the non financial information doesn't it, it won't consider like non financial information right so yes sir just consider the numbers represented in the like books of accounts and the balance sheet or the financial statements or financial information okay so again in the words of ml shandil shandilya auditing may be defined as inspecting comparing checking reviewing vouching and then ascertaining uh, just give me a second ascertaining scrutinizing examining and verifying the books of accounts of a business concerned with a view to have a correct turn true idea of its financial state of affairs here they use the word correct did you found this like they have represent the word called correct yes sir but it was in the early stage narrow perspective as they only consider the financial information the numbers which were represented in the financial information financial statements or the books of accounts or the records which were maintained by the management we can compare them with the vouchers so if both if both are correct then we can give the assurance of correct right with a term called correct right so when it includes the non financial information they may like uh, overrule the terms and conditions they may break the conditions right 
So sir, I have a doubt, sir. Yeah, okay. So what is the difference between the invoice and the voucher? Are they both same? So no, 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 no. You should not consider the invoice. You can compare the term called invoice and bill. So in GST, you would have like uh, learn. Uh, so do you have like uh, any idea about GST? Yes, sir. So indirect taxes in the indirect taxes you could have found like if there is a if there is a person who is registered under GST he can issue the invoice. Yes. So if you are not registered under the GST you cannot issue the invoice you should just issue the bill. Okay. So invoice uh, so that's the difference. So if those are things. So in order to come uh, verify the documents or the verify the records. So if uh, suppose for an example you bought an asset from a registered person. Okay. Okay, sir. So you bought a like, uh, let's assume that you need a like a, for transportation, you need a like a bus for your employees. So you bought the bus from a registered person. So what okay. he will, what he will be issuing, he will issue an invoice, right? As he is a registered yes. person. So even, yep. so bus is a, so it's an asset for you, right? Yes, sir. So you will like record in your books of accounts, you will record it under, under the category like asset, right? So yes. while the while conducting an audit, it will be verified with the help of an invoice. So you represented the asset value, the bus value is around 10 lakh, and the invoice value is also in 10 lakh. In invoice, also it is represented also uh, as 10 lakhs, right? So you can compare both the things, invoice and the books of accounts. And you can like give an opinion that it is purely correct, right? You should not say that uh, you, uh, you can't say the term like fair. It's correct. Okay. Exactly. It matches with both the documents, right? Books of account or books of accounts, which is maintained by the management and even the invoice, which you, which is issued by the supplier. Okay, sir. At that time, you can compare the, both the financial information. So in that case, you can give a, like a state the term called correct. So you just purely consider the financial information, right? Yes, sir. Still, do you have any doubt? No, sir. So the term called vouchers, vouchers means it, it includes all the things. Like that's the reason I told you like uh, in the further classes, we will be discussing about the vouching and verification. So how the vouchers are considered and how it is verified. Okay, sir. Okay. So I hope okay. it's clear. Still, if you have any doubts like uh, regarding the invoice or vouch or voucher, you can ask me, like you can ask at this moment. No, sir. I'm clear with that. So I hope you are clear the term uh, correct why it is used here. Yes, sir. So why it is used? Can you just uh, give me like uh, the reason? Uh, because it is in narrow sense, okay, narrow perspective. Narrow, narrow perspective, narrow perspective, which means it you just only consider the financial operations, financial, financial inf information. So when it comes to financial information, it's just like a numerical terms. Huh? You are comparing the books of accounts with the invoices huh? so that if both the things matches, then you can give an assurance for that. Uh, you can uh, give an assurance that it's purely correct. It's, it states that it's correct. So if it's, it also includes a non-financial information, at that time it can, you can say, you can use the word fair, right? Yes, sir. So that was the definition. So she, uh, Mr. Like, Shandilya, auditing may be defined as inspecting. First, you should inspect the books of accounts. And you need to compare, compare with what, like previous financial information data or the like uh, with the help of vouchers and you need to check and then you need to review and that vouching, as I told you, like vouching is like comparing both the vouchers and the books of accounts and the ascertaining what is the, what is the error? Is there any error? You need to ascertain it. And then you, know, you should go through thoroughly scrutinizing, which means go through like each and everything thoroughly. And then you have to examine the books of accounts, everything and verifying the books of accounts of a business concern with a view to have a correct and true idea of its financial state of affairs, which means financial position of an organization. Okay. This was like given by the ML Shandilya, right? Yes, sir. According then, uh, let's continue like according to Spicer and Pegler, audit such an examination of the books of accounts and vouchers of a business as will enable the auditor to satisfy himself that the balance sheet is properly drawn up so as to give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the business and whether the profit and loss account gives a true and fair view of the profit or loss for the financial period according to the best of his information and explanation given to him and as shown by the books and if not what respect he is not satisfied 
So as per according to Spicer and Pegler, even he he is studying the same thing, right? Did you found any? Did you found like any difference between the previous definitions? No, sir. I think it's the same. So here he just he just added one more thing. If not, in what respect he is not satisfied? He should state that. Okay, he should give an explanation. But one more thing, uh, when it comes to like objective part, uh, there is a statement called auditor is a watchdog but not a bloodhound. We are supposed to only like verify the document. If we found any mistake, we just uh, need to like represent the mistakes. And being an auditor, you need not investigate. There are some other departments to investigate, right? We are supposed to only find the errors and the mistakes. So between that, in order to find the errors or mistake, we need to investigate. So, but you need not after even even after finding the like mistake or error, you need not go for the deep investigation. Okay, so that's the term called auditor is a watchdog but not a bloodhound. Okay. Okay, sir. So, uh, you got my point, right? Yes, sir. We are supposed to only go like in order to find the mistake or error, we have to go for the investigation. But after finding the mistakes or error, you need not go for again and again the deep investigation. Okay, so okay, that will so be that... like uh, managed by some other team or some other. There are a lot of there is few uh, number a lot of people working for it, working behind it. Like there are huge departments, right? Like in case like if you found any error or mistake, you will be like submitting it to the central government, and they will like shoe on the organization, and then there will be some other like CBA or CA CAD, right? They will investigate it, investigate on it. Okay. So, being an auditor, you are supposed to find only the mistake or errors, and you need not go for the deep investigation. Okay. So, so you need not write all these definitions for the term called audit. So, still we have like it for only the narrow perspective. Okay. Thus, in its narrow sense, the scope of an audit is limited only to only authenticating the accounting records and then thereby to assure the accuracy and reliability of the financial statement and reports. The in narrow perspective, the scope of an audit is limited to only authenticating, authenticating, which means the quality of the accounting records and thereby to assure the accuracy and reliability of the financial statement and reports. So in case Haridarshini, if you are like, uh, if you wish to manipulate an auditor, is that possible? Do you think? I think it's not possible, sir. So if you are committing the error like from the beginning stage, it's not the error. Like let's assume like uh, let's assume it's a fraud. Okay. From okay. the initial stage, from the commencement of like the business, from the initial stage or the, from the uh, uh, from the starting of the financial year, you are committing a mistake. Okay. okay or fraud okay. in order to like uh, make more money or in order to uh, uh, so this the same thing, gain money or like uh, earn money. Okay. You are committing a mistake or committing a fraud. But that was like sequential. You are making it like sequence. It is purely like a, a everything, everything, the statement or the accounting records which were maintained by you is correct, exact, which matches with the vouchers. Everything goes correct. So is that possible for an auditor to find that mistake? In that case, do you think is that possible for an auditor to find the uh, sequential error committed by the organization or the management or the members? I think if he uh, sees it like um, normally means he can't find out, but if he digs into deeper, like he can find out, I think, sir. So, okay. Do you think an auditor have the sufficient time for the dip in a for to in order to like go for the depth of the uh, into that, like as you said, like for to dig the investigation, like go into that, get into the deep? Is that possible for him? And no, auditor, being an auditor, he will be like provided only 20 or 30 days or the 40 days or the six within the more time limit period will be like more, not exceeding like 60 days. Is that possible for an auditor to verify all the documents within 60 days? Which is the which were maintained by the management for a year for an year. Is that possible for him to go for the depth in deep detailed investigation? The audit will the, have a team, no, sir. Engagement, be, team, member, engagement team member. But I told you that one thing sequential okay. error. It's 
from purely like you are committing the error from the beginning stage so if you want if you disclose the statement that you committed the mistake or you uh, made a mistake until and unless the mistake cannot be found so at the in those situations there are lot of things lot of case studies okay sir that is because of financial financial infra like purely financial information like financial like operations if it includes that's due to narrow perspective if you are changing the okay. numbers in the invoice as well as changing the uh, numbers in the stay uh, books of accounts at that time it's purely not possible because the auditor will compare the books of accounts with the invoices right for vouching purpose at that time yes, is sir. it possible for him to find the error or the mistake or the fraud which is committed by the management it's not possible right so in order to find that mistake or error or fraud you need to go to the supplier the person who supplied you the bus right and then he need to check in his books of accounts so how will they fi find the error sir it, it will it be disclosed or uh, it will not they will ignore it we can't we can't even ignore we just have to like consider the points like uh, if the invoice is like around 15 lakhs you bought the bus for like 15 lakhs okay. right and you disclosed the you, uh, in your books of account you disclosed as 17 lakhs and okay. you have like like uh, like changed the invoice for 17 lakhs by uh, doing some by do, uh, by doing something you change the invoice price amount to 17 lakhs so is okay. that possible for an auditor to find the mistake at this moment no sir so the data is provided by the management usually the, which means the data is provided by you and i am being an auditor huh? i am verifying the uh, books of accounts with the help of your invoice so at that yes, time, it's not it's not possible for me to find the error right yes sir so it's purely financial information so if there is a sequential committing of errors or mistakes or frauds it cannot be it cannot be found find by the auditor okay sir so being practical uh, in practical uh, if, do you think uh, you think like uh, there are a lot of companies Or do they do you think like don't they commit any mistake or fraud? They might commit, sir, but it'll be it will be in a small scale. I but think. small scale, yeah, but small scale. But even that's a commit, com like it's a error, right? Or it's maybe it's a mistake, right? Fraud. Yes, sir. So these are the things cannot be found by the in case of financial information. If it is like financial information, if we like when it comes to like broader perspective, so that's the thing due over the change in over the. period they like uh include they also started including the non financial information okay it's not about just being the financial information financial information means in uh, as we took the example of like invoice like uh, like purchase of an bus and the books of accounts is compared with the invoice and if there is a sequential error it cannot be found by the auditor so in order to like uh, change or in order to like overcome that so it came like a uh, came as like broader perspective okay okay sir so they introduced the non financial information too so we will be discussing the definition of an audit in terms of broader perspective not narrow perspective okay okay sir so the term broader perspective over time with the changes in socio economic environment the concept of audit has also changed today auditing is not conformed to mere authentication of financial accounting records it is now considered to be an independent appraisal activity that extends itself towards evaluation of non financial aspects as well i told you right it also includes the non financial aspect okay yes sir as per the general guidelines of on internal auditing issued by the institute of chartered accountants of india auditing is a systematic and independent examination of data statement records operation and performances financial or otherwise of an enterprise for a stated purpose in any auditing situation the auditor perceives and recognizes the proposition before him for examination collects evidence evaluates the same and on this basis formulates his judgment which is communicated through his audit report according to them auditing is the accumulation on evaluation of evidence about information 
to determine and report on the degree of correspondence between the information and the established criteria. So, in order to rectify this narrow perspective, not just about rectifying it, in order to like change, to bring more accuracy and authenticity, they brought this broader perspective. So, uh, there is a board for us, like issuing like standards, uh, like as I told you, standards on, uh, as I told you, like standards on auditing, the board is, uh, which is the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, ICA. I hope you know that. Yes, right? sir. They will be yes. issuing the uh, standards on auditing. Uh, the, the guidelines will be provided by the ICA. So the definition which is defined by ICA is auditing is a systematic and independent examination of data, statement, records, operation and performances. Operation and performance, which means not only the financial operations, non-financial operations to under performances of an enter enterprise for a stated purpose. So every organization used to have an objective, right? The goal, objective, mission, vision, which you, you have you would have learned in your strategic management, right? Yes, sir. So do you have any idea about like the stated purpose? An organization, like if you look at like a Reliance oil industry, what is the purpose? What is the goal? What is the main motive of main motive of like Reliance Oil? In order to like provide or uh, provide like what oil services to the public, right? They procure like a crude oil from that, and they used to like uh, refine it, and then they used to like supply to the like suppliers in the for dealers, and they used, they are having also the Reliance petrol pumps. Their purpose is to only go with the particular business. They have some purpose, right? An enterprise for a stated purpose. Their uh, operation, uh, their, their operation is what like petroleum product services, right? Yes, sir. So for the stated purpose, they should not involve in other activities too. So if they involve, the auditor will find if there is any commit uh, commitment of error or fraud or mistake. So it's a systematic and independent examination. Again, it's repeated the same with few some with some few changes, which I told you like non financial aspects will also be considered in the broader perspective. Okay. So they will accumulate. They will uh, what they will accumulate the uh, it's given here according to them. Auditing is the accumulation and evaluation of evidence about information to determine and report on the degree of correspondence between the information information which they gain and the established criteria, okay? There is any difference between them. If there is any difference between them, they will report on audit report. They will give a report regarding it. And they will evaluate the evidence. And they will first accumulate the like, what we say, like the books of accounts. They will uh, procure all those documents from the management and then they will evaluate it. And they will, if there is any mistake, they will fire. Uh, yeah prepare an evidence and they will report on it uh, if, the, if there is any difference between information which they gain and established criteria established which are the in the books of accounts okay it was given by the ICA board I hope it's clear do you have any doubts in broader perspective no sir it's clear sir so, okay so according to SA 200 it is also issued by the I say board as per standards on auditing. SA means standards on auditing. In exam point of view, uh, if, if anyone asks, like if anyone, someone asks the audit definition, you should consider this one. Okay. An audit is a basic principle governing an audit. An audit is, in, can you read this up? Yes, sir. According to standards on auditing 200, basic principles governing an audit. An audit is independent examination of financial information of any entity, whether profit-oriented or not, and irrespective of its size or legal form, when such examination is conducted with a view to expressing an opinion thereon. Okay, so an audit is an independent examination of financial information. Financial information, I would just would like I would like to just elaborate you two things. Like financial information means we used to prepare the financial statements. It's a financial position of an organization, right? And yes. yesterday, in yesterday class, we discussed about the independent examination. Independent examination, which means, yep, uh, our auditor who should not. Uh, so can you just uh, tell me like, what is meant by that term, independent examination? Dependent yes. examination. 
independent examination in yesterday's class we have discussed it uh, right auditor should be it should not be uh, like influenced uh, fraud people uh, or yeah, yes. influenced influenced by the management or any other third party any other while conducting the audit it's a process of checking the books of accounts and the financial information of an entity right so yes. during that time and an auditor should not be influenced by that you should remember being an auditor even in future if you become an auditor you should not influenced by the third party or the management you must be independent always you should have the questioning mind professional skepticism should be maintained okay so an audit is an independent examination i hope you know the term independent examination in yesterday's class we have discussed of financial information financial information which means the financial statement financial position of an any entity any entity means like uh, it may be like a company private company public company joint stock company or like a sole proprietorship partnership or llp right any entity so the financial information the word financial information can be like uh, we can like elaborate that in two parts financial statements will be like prepared at, uh, in two situations right special purpose uh, financial statement and one more thing is like general purpose okay, okay so sir. do you have any like uh, financial financial statement is prepared in, in like in between the two in between in between two financial year we will be preparing a financial statement right yes sir so every in uh, at the end of an every accounting year uh, like financial year you will prepare a financial statements so that is called general purpose financial statement okay okay sir so the general purpose let me move this now general purpose and one more thing is special so the financial information i just uh, i'll tell you about like general purpose is prepared at the end of the accounting year and the special purpose will be prepared during like if there is an amalgamation or demerger like or like a uh, winding up of an organization at that time a special financial statement will be prepared so during that time if a financial statement is prepared that is called special purpose financial statement during amalgamation merger or demerger so the general purpose financial statement includes like profit and loss account trading account or the balance sheet or the cash flow statements or changes in the equity okay so these are the financial information i would say okay yes sir. so if anyone asks you are uh, like being an auditor we should know all these things financial information is like two things two kinds two different types like general purpose financial statement and special purpose financial statements so general purpose financial statements will be prepared at the end of the accounting year or the financial year so what are those things like trading account profit and loss account balance sheet changes in the equity uh, the cash flow statements right and the special purpose financial statement will be prepared during like amalgamation or merger or demerger or the like a uh, liquidation okay so financial information the term financial information i hope you find uh, understand the term financial financial information okay yes sir so i just uh, just like uh, just give me a second okay sir so is the visible like introduction part the term definition yes sir so we have just divided and as i told you i, I will i will like sending these notes uh, but anyhow i'll send this notes by evening introduction part okay okay in whatsapp i'll send you this in the in our group i'll send you so yes. the introduction part as i told you the definition according to sa 200 an audit is an independent examination of financial aid. these are the terms which i have highlighted in the like bold letters with the red color right you should remember this these are the technical terms which is used in the audit uh, definition independent examination financial information of any entity any entity which means i hope you got that any entity which means like it may be like a joint stock company or like private company public company llp sole proprietorship ha huh? okay and then whether profit oriented or not so as you know that 
if an organization it, if it is like a, if there is an, an organization it need not be like for only profit oriented what about like not for profit organizations like trust so we do we, we can also conduct an audit for trust to trust corporate bodies right it's also yes. whether profit oriented or not the audit must not be conducted only for the profit oriented business it also for the profit oriented or no, like not for profit also an audit can be conducted for but for profit uh, in our upcoming classes we will discuss in detail for our not for profit organization whether it is like mandatory or not audit is mandatory or not will be discussed in the upcoming classes okay irrespective of its size or legal whether it may be like a small small cap company mid cap company or large cap company so in terms of legality also okay so these are the terms you should remember like when it comes to like the definition of an audit an audit is an independent examination of financial information of any entity whether profit oriented or not irrespective of its size or legal form when such examination is conducted with a view to express an opinion why an audit is conducted to express an opinion whether it is true and fair view or not okay yes sir so did you get this like definition this is the thing which you sh you should remember even in the, in the exam point of view, you should remember this definition as per according to SA 200. Standards on auditing 200, you should remember an audit is an independent examination of financial information of any entity, whether profit oriented or not, and irrespective of its size or legal power, when such examination is conducted with a view to expressing an opinion thereon. Okay? Yes, sir. I hope this is clear to you, like the term audit definition. Yes, sir. So, do you have any doubts in this part, like definition? No, sir. So, okay. And then so we'll, in uh, exam, if they ask what is the definition of auditing, we have to write this, no, sir. Yeah, in the exactly, exactly. broader perspective. In the broader, in the, you may not like mention the broader perspective. You just uh, write like uh, according to SA standard 200, basic principle governing an audit. An audit is an independent examination of financial information of any entity whether profit oriented or not, and irrespective of its size or legal form, when such examination is conducted with a view to expressing an opinion there. Why you are conducting this audit examination? In order to give an opinion, express an opinion. Okay? So just mention this thing and you will get like sure shot. It is like, will not be asked, but like in the beginning of any other, any other questions, like basic principle governing an audit. So if they ask the definition of, of, definition of audit, you should write this. Okay? So uh, we have to buy hard the five uh, definitions in narrow perspective. Well, look, look, you are not in during my uh, like when I was like taking. Hello. So the essential features of auditing. So the essential features of auditing are enumerated below. So uh, Haridashni, once if you read this out, we'll like just uh, discuss about these things. Okay, sir. It involves evaluation and verification of the rele rele relevance, reliability, and adequacy of evidence in support of verifiable information such as vouchers, documents, and explanations. It is analytical, critical, and investigative review of systems of accounting and internal controls. The information audited may be financial or non-financial. There should be standards or criteria for uh, evaluation of the information in a systematic and scientific manner. The auditor should be competent and independent, qualified and possessing prescribed qualification and certificate of practice. It ensures okay. reliability. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, uh, let's just go through with this. Like It involves evaluation and verification of the relevance, reliability. Reliability, which means the how strong, the how, uh, like, uh, how supportive the documents are, all right, and adequacy of evidence. The more you get the evidence, like uh, you can uh, give an assurance for the statement of an, um, the you will be saying like a true and fair view, right? Uh, on the financial statements, giving an opinion on the financial statement. Why, when you are saying like true and fair view, if you have the adequ uh, adequate adequacy of evidence, then you can support the statement of verifiable information such as vouchers, documents, and explanations. With the help of vouchers, document explanations, you can compare with all the things which is provided by the management and you can um, verify it and evaluate and give, if the, if you found any error or mistake or with the uh, adequacy of evidence, you can support your statement. And then it is analytical, 
critical and investigative review of systems of accounting and internal controls. The term accounting and internal controls, internal control systems will be discussed in the upcoming classes. So it is analytical and critical. So auditing is not a simple thing. It's a critical thing because we need to investigate it. Like we have to go through and we have to like deep examine it in order to find any mistakes or errors. And the, aud the information audited may be financial or non-financial. So the audited, uh, as we discussed, like in narrow perspective and broader perspective, the, the features will also include both the things, financial and non-financial. So there should be standards, standards which is issued by the ICA board. So depending upon the standards and the uh, criteria rules and regulations which is issued by the ICA, so depending upon that, the evaluation of the information, given information should be made in a systematic and scientific manner. And then the auditor should be competent. He should be like possessing the uh, like a qualification to be an auditor and independent. So qualified and possessing prescribed qualification and certificate of practice. So in our upcoming classes, like in uh, like for company audit or there are certain kind of audit, uh, we do have like audit undertakings, like audit uh, undertakings, like for different entities like trust, hospitals. So for that, for each and everything, you need not be like a BNI, a CA or CMA. There are some certain qualification to be an auditor. And you must hold the certificate of practice in order to conduct an audit. So these are the essential features. And the next thing is it ensures reliability of information and authenticity of assertions made in the, the term assertions are also, it's, it's one of our uh, important terminology which you, you should remain. And it will also be discussed in the in upcoming classes in the detailed manner. Made in the financial statements relating to enterprises, whether profit oriented or not, whether it is required by law or not, to enable the auditor to form his opinion on the statements with regard to true and fair view of state of affairs of business and of profit or loss made during financial period disclosed to therein. The profit or loss, which is which, which, which is made by the organizations. So after like evaluating all the analytical like uh, review or the uh, like verification examining an auditor will give an opinion so that gives a like a uh, support it will be like uh, it, it is uh, depending upon the auditor's opinion there are uh, certain people the decision inducers make the decisions right so the state of affairs of the business so business positions are and our profit or loss made during financial period disclosed to therein the profit or loss which is like made during the period. So th this will be analyzed and uh, examined by the auditor and he will be like giving an opinion on these statements, whether it is true and fair view or not, okay? So do you have any doubts in the essential features of auditing? So again, it is repeated, nothing is like, nothing nothing new in this like we have discussed, I hope. Yes, sir. So only thing is he must have the qualification we have discussed in this part in the essential features. Already we have discussed about the reliability of information and authenticity. Uh, anyhow, it is repeated here the same thing to form his opinion on these statements, whether with regard to pro and fair view of state of affairs of business, right? So everywhere being yes, an sir. auditor, you should give an opinion whether it is pro and fair view or not, because it is a primary objective of conducting an audit. Okay. So these are the okay. essential features on our auditing. And the nature of an auditing is also like, uh, there are a few definitions. Once if you go through with this, like if you read this, like uh, it's not, in exam point of view, it's not more important. Okay. If you once, if you go through with this, like if you give a novel reading about this, you can understand. So once we'll give a novel reading of this nature of an auditing. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. So can you read this out or like, uh, do you need any break? I'll read it. I'll read it, sir. Oh, okay, fine. So we can continue with nature of our auditing. Nature of auditing. Auditing has generally been associated with only accounting and financial records. Thus, International Auditing and Assurance Standard Board uh, opinion that the object of an audit of financial statement is to enable the auditor to express an opinion whether the financial statements are prepared in all material respects in accordance with an identified financial re financial reporting framework. Similarly, Matthews defines auditing as being concerned with the verification of accounting data with determining the accuracy and reliability of accounting statements and reports. 
In the above definitions, the emphasis is clearly on uh, verif verification of accounting data with a view to reporting on the reliability of the accounting statements. Verification of accounting data involves a careful evaluation, uh, evaluation of uh, evidence available to the auditor in support of various transactions. Thus, an auditor examines internal evidence, that is, the records, vouchers, and books of accounts. To assess the quality of the internal evidence, he also tests and evaluates the relevant systems in the organization. He also obtains external evidence such as confirmation of bank balances. In some cases, he may decide to conduct physical counts and surveys or even call for independent expert opinion regarding technical matters. However, developments in the last few decades have extended the scope of auditing. Auditing today is no longer concerned only uh, with financial accounting records. It may also involve a review of compliance with law, costing, costing records, uh, operations, and performances. Therefore, a more comprehensive definition is required to describe a modern auditing. Okay. Uh, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Okay, okay. Has just, defined... just, just hold on. Like, uh, we'll just discuss about the above paragraphs just for like an overview as an overview. So, did you understand like okay, anything so... like within uh, while you are while you read this paragraph? Did you understand anything like what is the nature? What they are uh, about to tell? Like, what they what is the, what they are conveying? What they have conveyed? So, uh, an auditor has to like. Uh, verify the internal evidences like records, vouchers, and books of accounts. So if needed, he can also conduct uh, surveys, physical counts, uh, or uh, so can we, also uh, call for. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you're right. You're right. In order to like uh, to be strong on his opinion, he may like, uh, he may decide to conduct physical counts and surveys or even call for an independent expert opinion regarding technical matters. So those are the things. So as we have discussed earlier, like auditing has generally been associated with only accounting and financial records. This International Auditing and Assurance Standard Board, IASB, opined that objective of an audit of financial statement is to enable the auditor to express an opinion whether the financial statements are prepared in all material respects in accordance with an identified financial reporting framework. So the financial reporting framework. So in our yesterday class, we have discussed, right? So the accounting policies, concepts, and conventions varies from different entities. So the one, one organization like Tata may undergo like straight line depreciation method and the Reliance may undergo for his, for his assets. Uh, WDV, return down value method, right? Yes, sir. So I hope it's clear. The accounting policies may vary from different between two entities, between two organizations. So when it comes to like financial reporting framework, uh, the Companies Act 2013, as per Companies Act 2013, are the companies may like uh, prepare the financial accounts as per companies act 2013. So when it comes to like banking, they have separate act. Electricity, they do have separate act. So they have to prepare the financial statement as per the banking regulation act, banking act. In case of SBA, let's take an example of an SBA. So if it, in, in case of SBA, you should prepare the financial statement as per the banking act. So when it comes to like electricity companies, so in our in in case of like example of like Tamil Nadu, we do have some separate electricity board, right? So they have to prepare the financial statements as per the Electricity Act. They do have the separate act. So applicable financial reporting framework, the term financial reporting framework, even it is a important terminology in our auditing part. Okay. So the financial statements must be prepared as per the applicable financial reporting framework. So in case of like a company, like they have to prepare the, uh, the financial statement as per the Companies Act 2013. So it depends upon the nature of an entity, whether it is like banking company. In case of banking company, they have to prepare the financial statements as per the Banking Act. Okay. So everyone, everyone need not prepare the financial statement as per the Schedule 3 of the Companies Act. Okay. If it is like a public company, like as a, for an example, like Tata or Reliance, they have to prepare the uh, financial statement as per the Companies Act 2013 as per like Schedule 3. But in case of like banking, SBA, HDFC, ICA, Axis Bank, Indian Bank, huh, they have to prepare as per the 
applicable financial reporting framework, which is as per the nature of the entity, banking regulation side. Okay. In case of electricity, they do have. And in case of insurance company, they do have some separate act insurance like LIC. Okay. I hope you understand the technical term financial reporting framework. Yes, sir. How you represent the financial statements. That's the term financial reporting. How you report it. The financial statements which you have prepared, how you are reporting it. The framework. The framework depends upon the nature of an entity. Okay. Yes, sir. So similarly, most defense auditing has been again 1% defend the term called auditing has been concerned with the verification of accounting data with determining the accuracy and reliability of accounting statements and reports. So in the above, above definition, as you told, like, there's an auditor examines internal evidence that's uh, with the help of records, voucher and books of accounts to assess the quality of internal evidence. He also test and evaluates the relevant system in the organization. He also obtain external evidence such as confirmation of bank balances. In some cases, he may decide to conduct physical counts. Physical counts, which means like uh, like inventories or the assets, okay? Or even call for an independent expert opinion regarding technical matters, okay? However, developments in the last few decades have extended the scope of auditing. Auditing today is no longer concerned only with financial accounting record. It may also involve a review of complaints with law. With law, which means it's a non-financial information, right? Yeah. Just give me a second. So sorry, so sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. So okay. Are you, okay. So so as I told you, it's purely not uh, like non-financial information. Also, we included like complaints with law, costing, records, operations, and performances. So earlier it used to be like narrow perspective. Now it is broader perspective. Okay. It also involves review of complaints with law, costing records, costing records, operation, and performances. Therefore, a more comprehensive definition is required to describe modern auditing. The ICA has defined auditing as a, again, systematic and independent examination of data, statement records, operations. So when it comes to, as I told you, like uh, as you, you have asked me, right, you need not write this definition. Once again, I'm just uh, mentioning you that you have to write the definition of audit as per SA 200. Okay. This is just the okay. definition given by ICA. In uh, any auditing situation, the auditor perceives and recognizes the proposition before him for examination, collects evidence, evaluates the same on his, on this basis, formulates his judgment, which is communicated through his audit report. If you find any evidence or if we find any errors or mistakes, that will be disclosed with his audit report. Okay. This definition does not confine uh, auditing to accounting record. It recognizes that auditing can extend to such areas as managerial performance, cost data, and operations. So another good description of auditing is given by Aaron Selder and Beasley. According to them, auditing is the accumulation and evaluation of evidence about information to determine and report on the degree of correspondence. Again, it is repeated here, right? Auditing should be done by a competent yes, and independent persons. So if you find any like doubt, if you when you again, if you go through with this, if you found any doubt, you can ask me, okay? This is not more important yes. uh, like in exam point of view, but as we are going like in a conceptual manner, we are discussing each and every part. Okay. This definition emphasizes the following parts. The information under audit need not necessarily be accounting information. However, information must be in a verifiable, verifiable form. So information which is like provided by the management and what are the like opinion which is for, like uh, given in the audit report, it should be like in a verifiable form. So on the uh, information like uh, under audit need not necessarily be accounting information. It, it also can be non-accounting information, it's just like non-financial information. Okay. There should be standards on criteria for the evaluation of the information. So while evaluating the like financial information, as we have the like board like ICA, who is governing like uh, regulating our governing body, they, they will issue the standards. So as per that standards, we will be like evaluating and like value uh, examining the uh, financial accounts and we'll conduct an audit. The auditor should, should not only be a competent person, but you should also have it. Even if you're qualified to be an auditor, that's not more than enough. So the one and only thing important part is you should have the independent mental attitude. I hope it has been repeated more than 10 times in a, till our, till this part, I think, right? Yes, sir. So being independency, independence is must 
must think it's a more important thing okay so being uh, even after getting qualification doesn't matter like being an auditor you should have the independence independent mental attitude you can repeat these terms terms terminologies okay during all writing exams so when it comes to like definitions of the nature of the features okay it is thus clear that auditing involves evaluating the relevance again the same thing and adequacy of evidence in support of verifiable information it is not a process of mechanical comparison of items in the financial statement with the entries in the books of accounts so in the narrow perspective it was just a comparison mechanical comparison of an items in, in the financial statement with the entries in the books of account right so in yes, a narrow sir. perspective we were just comparing the financial statements with the help of the books of accounts so now it's not like that it's a broader perspective it involve it now does it involve a very mechanical ticking of entries in the books of accounts with the vouchers or other records it is a process of collection and a critical evaluation of evidence it is a analytical it is critical it is investigative as per broader perspective it is analytical it is critical it is investigative we have discussed this in in our essential features of an auditing part right yes sir thus auditing has its principal roots not in accounting which it reviews but in logic on which it leans heavily for ideas and methods so auditing has its principal roots not in accounting which it reviews so but in logic on which it leans heavily for ideas and methods so at the end of the like auditing uh, well, the reason behind conducting an audit i hope you know that it is helpful for the end users for the decision makers right yes even sir. our auditing has some special things not just like accounts accounts they have like uh, they are prepared or uh, upon they are depending upon the gaap as we know the generally accepted accounting principle the board they used to issue in the same manner we do have some special part we do have like special line, like uh, thing like ica board we do have like standards on conducting how to conduct an audit okay so after conducting an audit also it helps the organization even right whether uh, how they are losing some uh, like uh, whether they are unable uh, able to make profits or not so after investigation only it, it will be known Hello. even for an organization right okay yes sir so i hope it's clear to you so just give me a second yes sir just give me a second So, okay. So let's continue with the topic like relationship between accounting and auditing. So till now, I hope everything is clear. If you have any doubts, you can like ask in the like WhatsApp group or in the chat box. Okay. So let's begin okay. with ac accounting and auditing. Difference. So accounting and auditing. So uh, Haridashni, uh, please bring this out. Counting. It is a collection, classification, and summarization of data for preparation of books of accounts and to make financial statements. Okay. So auditing. It, okay. Just uh, after like let's say, like after completion of each and every like each and every definition will okay, sir. more. It is a collection, classification. As you know, that accounting is prepared, accounts, books of accounts is prepared by uh, of, by by initiating with the collection, collection of data and classifying it. Classification is collection is made in the under the journal classification is made under the ledgers and the summarization is made and made in the trial balance and the preparation of books of accounts after completion of the trial balance we used to prepare the like financial statement trading account like p and account in case of sole proprietorship we prepare the trading account p and account and then you know, like balance sheet and to make financial statement these are the things preparation of big books of accounts right it is a collection it is collected first it is recorded in the journal and classified as ledgers and then summarized in the trial balance and the end of that end of that books after preparation of all those books at the end the financial statements are prepared right auditing is a so then continue auditing is an analytical and critical examination of books of accounts financial records and the financial statements prepared thereon okay auditing is an analytical and critical examination of books of accounts the books of accounts which is prepared by the accounting team will be examined in a critical manner, in an analytical manner of the books of accounts, financial records and the financial statement prepared thereon. The account auditing starts when where accounting ends, I would say. I hope it's clear, right? Auditing yes, starts 
when where accounting ends if accounting process is finished then only auditing process will be will begin okay will be started so without the like, uh, completion of accounting auditing can be started right without a proper uh, like uh, books of accounts we cannot start conducting an audit we cannot initiate audit right so yes, you can uh, you can write the difference like you can keep in your mind in order to remember these points auditing starts where accounting ends okay this is the difference in the first point and then next continue counting is the recording of transactions at the time of occurrence okay so after like uh, occurrence only that uh, like transactions are recorded in accounting in auditing we'll continue Auditing is the post-mortem examination of recorded transactions. So after recording the transactions, so whether it is like uh, true or whether it is correct, whether it is like, is there any mistake? Is there any error or fraud committed in this transaction? This will be verified, examined by with the help of auditing. So that is explained here. Okay, it is the post-mortem. It is clearly noted that it is a post-mortem examination of recorded transactions. So first of all, in accounting, it will be recorded at the time of occurrence or like in case like if you purchased like a asset at the time you will record as a as a transaction if you like representing the figures the amount in a like a different amount you purchased it for like 15 lakhs and you're representing it for 17 lakhs so at that post-mortem examination of recorded transaction it will be fine with the help of auditing okay auditing is an examination of the recorded transactions and then uh, i'll read this out it measures the business events in monetary terms records them and communicates the financial communicates the financial result, uh, results through financial statements. As we know that it mentions the business even in monetary terms. As a account, term, accounting itself represents the in terms of monetary only, right? In terms of figures, in terms of like numerical terms. Records them and communicates the financial results, results through financial statements. So the end users will be knowing the financial results with the help of financial statements, right? Without financial statements, the end user cannot know the financial results, what is the position of the company, right? So it, it's purely monetary terms, but auditing, when it comes to auditing part, auditing reviews financial records to form an opinion on the authenticity of financial statement. So how quali qual like how qualified it is, how much, like how strong it is, the information which is provided by the like uh, organization in terms of, in terms of like in monetary terms, how strong it is, how valid it is, okay? It, uh, auditor is to give the opinion on the financial statement as we have discussed about it in a earlier session, right? I hope yes, sir. you know it's clear the difference between accounting and auditing. First thing is accounting, auditing starts where accounting ends. And uh, second thing is it's only recording of transactions at the time of occurrence. And the third thing, it measures the business events in monetary terms. Here in auditing, it gives the authenticity of financial statements. Okay. And then its primary responsibility of its uh, is of the management towards the shareholders or owners to maintain the financial records in such a manner that financial statements can be prepared from the records. So the financial statements can be prepared with the help of the financial records, which is maintained by the management, right? At the end of the accounting year, like accounting year or the financial year, the financial statements are prepared with the help of the financial records, which is maintained by the management, right? In Accounting, it is like uh, the financial statements are prepared with the help of financial records maintained by the management. But when it comes to like auditing, the auditor is an independent person appointed by the business entity to review the financial statement and to give. Same again and again, the financial statements are prepared under the accounting and it is verified in the, under the auditing. And the opinion is also given under the auditing. And whether it is stated, whether it is true and fair, fair, fair or not, and the authenticity of the financial statement is also provided under the auditing. Okay. You can combine both these points. There is no any major difference between both these points. Okay. I hope it's clear. Okay, sir. It's clear. Okay. And accountant, then, uh, can you read this out? Yes, sir. An accountant is not expected to review or report on the financial statement, but to report the compliance, compliance, uh, of, records compliance of records to the management. An accountant is An not expected. Uh, okay, and an accountant is not expected to review or report on them because accountant is only there to record the transactions and compilation. Ah, yeah, right. 
is there any doubt like do you have any doubts no sir no sir so an accountant being an accountant you are only supposed to maintain the books of accounts and you are supposed to record the transactions at the time of occurrence okay but you are not supposed to you are not an expert right you are not qualified to verify it right there is a separate person called auditor who have the expertised knowledge towards the subject he has the qualification he is competent he is being independent being an independent person he has the qualification to conduct an audit which means he has the right to review or report on the financial statements but an accountant do it he, he, he never never an accountant can review or report on the financial statements okay but an auditor an auditor is required to submit a report with his opinion on true and fair assertions made in the financial statements to the owners okay there is a, there, are, there is a separate person called auditor who is supposed to verify expert he is an expert he is an expert to review he have the qualification to review there is a separate person right but an accountant is only to record the transaction maintain the books of accounts okay but for an internal purpose they can being an accountant he can verify or he can report for internal purpose but when it comes to like external like for uh, end user decision makers there must be a separate person called an auditor he is only supposed to verify the financial statements and provide a report on it okay and accountant works for the management yeah it's known very well an accountant being if you are being an accountant for a company you will be working for that company only right yes sir but being an auditor you, you will be like having a firm right you will have a firm and you will be like conducting audit for different organizations i hope it's clear right the auditor is an independent uh, person uh, account able to the uh, accountable to the owners or shareholders or not to the management so an accountant works for the manager but then auditor is an independent person accountable to the owners or shareholders and not to the management he is supposed to provide the only the data to the owners or the shareholders which means the end users right but the in, management is it's it's an internal internal management right Inter, internal parties and accountant works for the management if you work for the management being an auditor you will be influenced by the management right then what about the independency is that clear yes sir so being an accountant you work for the management so you have to obey the words of the management right at that time you will be influenced by the management being an accountant so what about being an auditor auditor being an independent person he will not be influenced by the management so that he is accountable to only the owners or the shareholders which means the end users but not particular to the management if he is like uh, accountable to the management then he is it is directly implies implies that uh, he is like a uh, influenced by the management so in beginning we have discussed auditor is an independent person he is not influenced by the management so the same thing is repeated here okay i hope it's clear yes sir no such liability is there in accounting in certain circumstances uh if you are being an accountant uh being an accountant you won't have like uh, be, you will be like a, uh, like acting as an employee you won't be like liable to any other things uh you won't have any liabilities in accounting part in certain circumstances the auditor could be held liable to third parties also okay if we commit any if being an auditor if you commit any mistake you are not working for you are not working for the management right so and, uh yes, depending upon your opinion there are inducers who are taking the uh, like crucial decisions if your opinion goes wrong so what about the inducers decisions even that goes wrong if that goes wrong who who will be liable to the third parties an auditor will be liable to third parties okay i hope yes, it's sir. clear so is there any doubt is there any doubt for you in this part accounting and auditing part no sir so okay uh these are like uh, the same thing maintenance of accounts may not be mandatory for small individuals or partnership firms as we know that for if it when it comes to like large scale uh, each and everything like books of accounts must be maintained and it should be kept for some certain years okay or it could be exempt for various individuals or small partnerships example under section 44 ab of the income tax act and even in case where maintaining books of accounts is a statutory requirement under section 44a 
but maybe mandatory under other laws example for companies under the company side so in both the cases books of accounts must be maintained but when it comes to like small scale small individuals or small partnership firms uh, it is not mandatory okay so here it is uh, given that maintenance of accounts may not be mandatory and it is uh, here it is given that audit could be exempt for various individuals which means not exempt you are not supposed to you are it's not mandatory to maintain the books of accounts okay accounting is done it's as per the principle as set by indian accounting standards indias we have right it will be like uh, discussed in corporate accounting i think indias and auditing you yes, have select like, standards on auditing as i told you for auditing we have like standards on auditing principles those are the principles for accounting we have indias and for auditing we have like standards on auditing i hope it's clear till the difference what are the difference between like uh, auditing and accounting so if it's you have clear. any doubts you, uh, if you have any doubts for that like you can ask me at any time okay okay sir i hope the time is just left with we have left just left with like 5 minutes we will just have a like overview of audit and investigation so the term meaning the difference between like let's begin with the meaning auditing is an independent and systematic examination of the evidence underlying the accounting or other data in accordance with the generally accepted auditing practices to ascertain the true and fair view of the financial statement of an enterprise and investigation may be defined as an examination of accounts and records with a view to ascertain any fact for some special purpose which varies from assignment to assignment okay while conducting an investigation you will find if there is any difference between the documents defined as an examination of accounts and records with a view to ascertain any fact for some special purpose you will find if if it is an like audit investigation i told you like the term investigation itself represents if you find any error or mistake then you have to supposed to have the evidence so that's that's leads to the investigation right if you are conducting an investigation let's take an example of cba investigation the term for to in order to describe the term meaning as we are discussing the meaning part i am just uh, discussing the term investigation so we took an example of cba so if they go for an investigation if they prove if they prove themselves that they are true and fair if they are correct then they are supposed to submit the evidence right so yes, in sir. auditing when it comes to an auditing you need not go for deep deep investigation i told you auditor audit who is a watchdog but not a blood hound blood hound which means he is not supposed to go for the depth of deep investigation in order to find why the error or the mistake is committed he is supposed to like represent only whether error or fraud is committed or not the question is only committed or not yes or no but when it comes to investigation but what is the proof you have what is the evidence do you have how can you say that that it is wrong you have to prove yourself but when it comes to like investigation audit part you need not prove you need not prove yourself by providing all the evidence they we have like separate departments to verify that right so that's the difference but they are they look similar right the audit terms is it's, itself it represent the investigation without investigation you cannot find any error or mistake but when it comes to like deep deep the like deep comparison you know you need not go for deep investigation okay is that clear yes sir and the scope is like the scope of audit audit has a wide scope in statutory audit the scope is determined by the relevant law in case of a private audit management by a client the scope of investigation on the other hand is limited as regards the period or areas to be covered the scope of investigation uh, as we know that the scope as a wide scope in auditing the statutory audit the scope is deter determined by the relevant law as per our the law as per uh, rules and regulation issued by the board in case of statutory audit statutory audit is a mandatory audit for public few public companies for public companies which is mandatory statutory the term statutory itself represents it, uh, it must be conducted as per the laws rules and regulations issued by the government okay that that's that itself represent the term statutory i hope you know the term statutory right as yes, per the, as per law so as per law when it comes in case of like as per law it has a wide scope as per law as per the standards on auditing it must be uh, uh we have to conduct the audit so when it comes to like private audit uh, we, if you are having an organization if you are having a company so you are like uh, having a, like you are interested to, to conduct an audit so you uh, you would like to know the how the internal control system is whether it is strong or weak so you may conduct an internal audit right 
in your organization yes. so it's a private audit you can only conduct an audit for the inventories or like assets that's up to your wish right it depends yes, upon sir. your your uh, like your criteria how you are like uh, going to conduct an audit it it is purely called private audit it is a management audit that that's why it's represented as management audit by a client but when it comes to investigation part investigation part the scope of investigation on the other hand is limited because if a specific mistake or error is committed then the investigation is purely goes only for that specific mistake right i hope it's clear yes. uh, how, yes. so if there is any commitment of any mistake or fraud being a police officer or the cba you will be like deep investigating about the particular issue right you won't be going for everything so if there is any mistake like mistake in your organization that there is a like a uh, fraud in your inventory the investigation will be purely only on the investigation of inventories they won't be like uh, checking your internal control system policies right so it's like yes, narrow sir. i would say it is a narrow thing investigation is purely narrow but the scope of an audit is like wider term it's a broader so when it comes to like private audits it's, again it comes as a narrow so as per statutory audit it is like wider broader okay the scope i hope the difference you have understand the difference right yes sir the meaning scope and when it comes to like objective part in audit the accounts and records are verified as to the truth and fairness investigation is for special purpose special purpose example investigation on the behalf of incoming partner so in audit we are used to like uh, verify the records and we have to give our opinion truth and fairness investigation is for special purpose as we know if there is any commitment of fraud or error or mistake if you have any questioning mind uh, if there is if you found like if there might be any error like there might be any commitment of mistake at that time you will start an investigation right investing uh, investigation on the behalf of incoming partner if suppose if we, if an entity in like let's assume we have a like partnership firm there are two partners if there is an incoming partner at the time if he you uh, i hope you know that revaluation of assets you know that you know that right revaluation of yes, we are used to prepare the reconstitution of a firm the the policies will be changed right yes so sir. everything will be changed at the time of incoming of new partner that's an example investigation for a special purpose and the auditing is conducted at the end of the financial year but if in case of private audit if it required for you like in between the year you can conduct any audit so the objective is to provide truth and fairness it is for special purpose okay and the next difference is audit procedure the audit is conducted in accordance with the generally accepted auditing principle investigation involves an extended auditing procedures investigation they need not go under any principal types if they find any error or mistake they will deep on keep on digging the investigation right but the auditing is conducted as per our principles so that is an audit procedure we do have some certain procedures audit documentation audit engagement audit report that will be discussed in our upcoming classes okay and the next part is evidence an auditor will evaluate the accounting records predominantly based on persuasive evidence it will also be discussed in the persuasive evidence will be discussed in our upcoming classes uh, under audit evidence an investigator can draw his conclusions only on the basis of substantial or sometimes conclusive evidence if we have the like each and every evidence within himself then only he can have a conclusion in investigation but when it comes to like audit part as i told you audit is a watchdog but not a bloodhound i will provide the notes for you uh, regarding that auditor is a watchdog but not a bloodhound and there are some special uh, like case laws even and you can go through with that if you have any doubts regarding that you can ask me okay the evidence i told you audit evidence like uh, it will be discussed in the upcoming classes okay predominantly based on persuasive evidence if we, we cannot go in detail at this moment okay and we do not have enough time okay sir and the approach auditor is skeptical and not suspicious skeptical which means an act of questioning mind you have to maintain the questioning mind you have to ask keep on ask yourself so there might be any error in cut here uh, there might be you have or you should also have the questioning mind while conducting an audit are not suspicious whereas an investigator starts with suspicion and collects evidence if you are not being suspicious while conducting an oil 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 investigation you cannot find the error right you cannot find the evidence right you cannot collect the evidence so if you are being suspicious then only you can collect the evidence but in according to auditing 
you need not be like suspicious. You should be skeptical, which means questioning mind. Okay. Okay, sir. And when it comes to like periodicity part, auditing is a routine exercise. Investigation may spread over a period longer than one year. So if you are unable to find any evidence, you may keep on digging, right? You can you will keep on investigating for longer period. But auditing is a routine exercise. Within the sp uh, specified period, you have to finish the audit. And it is like connected annually. It is normally connected annually. Within the specified time period, you have to conduct the audit and you have to make a report on it, right? The period is it is within the specified time period under auditing. But when it comes to like investigation, if they do not find any evidence, it will keep on like for a longer period, more than one day. It can be more than one year, okay? okay. I hope it's clear the difference between like a... Uh, Auditing part, uh, auditing and investigation, and accounting and auditing. I hope it's clear. If you find, if you find, if you find any difficulty or if you find any doubts, you can ask me at any time. Okay, kindly please go through with these topics. Uh, we can expect a question like difference between audit and investigation or audit and ac accounting. Every time we used to like expect a differentiating question. Okay, that may be like from even upcoming okay. topics, but from introduction part, if there is any possibility to like, if he is uh, willing to ask any questions. In earlier attempts, he asked like basic principles governing an audit, which will be discussed in the next class. Okay. These are the important things okay. I would say audit and investigation, accounting and auditing, features and of uh, features are the things which I have noted here. Like, uh, are you able to see this? Like, auditing, definition, accounting, yes, sir. and auditing. These are the important topics from where you can expect a question in case of like, uh, introduction part you can expect a questions from these topic these topics okay accounting auditing scope objectives basic principles advantages inherent limitations okay we can expect okay, questions from these topics when it comes to like introduction part till now we have finished like till here objectives uh, again we'll go through the icma study meter once again and even the scope we have uh, overall we have discussed like we have took an overview of this okay this definition, accounting and auditing, scope, objectives. So basic principle is like a code of ethics, the quality of being an auditor. Okay, it will also be discussed in the next class. It's just about uh, five or 10 minutes. And the advantage is also like about 10 or five minutes and inherently better than 10 or five minutes. And then we'll uh, start with the next new topic. Okay, the next class. Okay, sir. I hope it's clear. Do you have any doubts till the uh, till now? The what no, we have sir, we discussed? I hope it's, it's clear, clear, right? Yes, if you, sir. If you find any difficulty, please feel free uh, to ask any questions in between the class. Even. Okay. Okay, sir. So, okay. Oh, again, I would like to say one thing. On, uh, please go through with these topics. If you go through after completion of class, it will be more helpful for you to remember. And I will send you the notes. And also, you, you should also even prepare the notes, like summary charts, like mind mappings. So, I will guide you with that. And... Once again, I would like to say you that for, for tomorrow's session, please go through with this uh, scope of auditing, basic principle governing and auditing, objectives of audit. Just give a novel reading, which you gave uh, yesterday, right? Till, the, till yes, here. Sir. Till classification of audit, you know. Uh, till this, like, uh, where inherent limitations of audit. Please give a novel reading for this, okay? So that it will be more helpful for okay, you sir. to understand. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so to uh, for, we'll end the session. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir.